to the podcast Food Talks. I'm Dallas Townsend. I will be your host. And I act as the uninformed consumer asking a nutritionist all the questions that you have. Hello, I'm Jordan Townsend. I'm our resident nutritionist here at Naturally You, and I'm here to inform the uninformed consumer, answering and helping to unpack some of your more difficult nutrition questions. All right, well, welcome back today. Today, we're going to be talking about ears and ear health. So we're going to let Jordan dive into this one and tell us some neat tricks about ear candling. We'll get to that. (laughs) But more importantly, we figured, you know, since you're listening to this podcast every week or month, we figured we should kind of dive into how you're actually processing that. Because (laughs) as you would imagine, the ears are, like all the organs, extremely complicated. They're not just this one little simple thing. Noise comes in and your brain makes sense of it. No, no, no. There's several, several steps. And as always, I like to kind of just start at the most basic and move kind of through the ear so i don't know if you can see it but i have a little ear diagram here so i kind of can it's gonna be a little harder to describe but the ear is basically broken down into three different parts what we think of as our ear is just basically the canal that's an easier way to think of it the funnel that's to make sure it directly grabs and directs the noise and concentrates us as much as humanly possible. So it's funny, what we think of as your ear is nothing more than like the big uh, megaphone part of like mm-hmm. an old record player. Versus once you really get inside to the actual biology, it gets a lot more complicated. So the first thing you run up against is actually the ear drum. So we've always, always probably heard, our parents have always told us to, right, don't don't stick anything in your ears. No or, Q-tips. You'll rupture your eardrum. You can go deaf forever. And it's not that you'll go deaf forever. It hurts. The eardrum is obviously very, very sensitive. Because your eardrum is the first little piece that actually receives that vibration and then transfers it. Now, you actually, from there, it kind of breaks down into three different individual pieces. One is called the malleus and one is called the cochlea. So those are the two actual and and strangely enough they're actually even a form of bone they're actually kind of solid structures they're not mm-hmm. really soft tissue like the like the ear which is mostly um cartilage and then the the drum itself is actually still soft tissue so these are more cuz think about a good example of that like think about a guitar guitar is solid because that solid holds that vibration better than something soft soft yeah. is going to absorb the vibration and not let the sound waves actually make it to the uh to where it re- is actually received and picked up. So that's where this gets kind of interesting, too, is because once you once it hits the eardrum, c- travels through that malleus and gets to the cochlea. So that's the main processor. So what happens once you get to that point is there's all these little bitty tiny hairs. So this is what's kind of interesting about the way your ears work is it's similar to the way the rods and cones in your eyes work. Because remember, rods and cones only pick up specific waves of light. Mm-hmm. Or what we would call a frequency, right? Well, there's certain hairs that only respond to certain frequencies. So there's really high-pitched hairs that only when they are stimulated do they send their signals. There's really low-pitched hairs that only respond when they get stimulated. Are they just longer and shorter, or are they thicker and thinner? So it's more where they're positioned. I don't necessarily know, because we're talking, you got to think about how tiny Super we're talking, tiny. right? So I don't necessarily know exactly if they're different in size, but think of it almost like a pattern. There's, there's, as you descend down the ear, those are the different levels of hairs. So that's what's nice. This whole, this big frequency of stuff comes into your ear. Well, it's only going to be stimulating a small band of the actual hairs to send that signal to the brain. Because that's where it gets even stranger. Similar to vision, as when we were talking about it. What happens is when that frequency is vibrated, it sends a nerve impulse to the auditory processing part of your brain. From there, and this is what's crazy, Dallas, from that happening right there, all of that data is not just being sent, received, processed, and then made sense of. So that's not you knew I snapped. That's all it was to you. But all of that data had to be crunched almost immediately. So when you really think about it, our brain is an incredible computer. It, it is very impressive. It, it really, at, at doing what it's supposed to, right? Don't ask it to do com- complex math equations. That's not what our computation system is made up for. But when you ask it to process visual data, sensory data, if I touch you, if you smell something, it's amazing how almost, to, we call it instantaneous, right? Like you walk in, you smell something. Hey, who's cooking hamburgers? Yeah. Well, how did you get to that? There's so many different or levels. Who's farted, you know? 
<laughs> but th- that's exactly that to make that smell was thousands of different chemicals, right? To, yeah. to, to hear the to hear stuff that's a ton of different frequencies, especially stuff like music, right? Well, a lot of times when you're listening to a band, you can hear the drums and you can hear the guitar and you can hear the singer. So it's just amazing when you really think about how how well adapted our bodies are for the problems we're actually supposed to be encountering. Yeah, that's what's interesting about people is we're good at the stuff we're supposed to be. So that's the thing when people. A good example is we talk about our bodies are very fragile. Well, yeah, you know you're not supposed to be going fifty miles an hour in a car. You're not. So yeah, your body built no defense mechanism for an, a fifty mile an hour impact. All of that to digress. So that's kind of the general way the the ear works is it takes in these things. Only the specific hairs that match up with that frequency tell send those signals to the brain, and then it crunches that raw data and tries to make sense of it too. Now. Hmm. Hearing is another interesting one, too, kind of like sight. You know how you can make somebody flinch? If something scares you, too, you can actually, a lot of times, as you've probably noticed, hear a really loud noise. You'll respond before you even know what the noise is. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're getting into the reflex part of the brain. So what it can do is it'll actually, when you hear loud noises, something startles you or surprises you, it'll actually skip the part of your brain that processes it. It'll send it directly to the motor neurons. If it deems it a threat. So that's Hmm. another thing your brain and body are doing too is based on how quickly and more importantly how surprising or fear-based is really what it is. That response is it will actually tell you to move before you actually even spend time trying to figure out what it is. So again, another thing, how does our body and our brains even know how to do that? We're really not sure. We just know that on some level, that's the bra- that's the path that it's decided to take. That's how it approaches the problem. If you just duck, you live. <laughs> the people who didn't have reflexes to duck, yeah, then we'll figure out the sound later. Didn't live, yeah. So, and again, that's just why we got to that point. So, we all obviously know about hearing. Now, you were kind of talking to me about this earlier too, because again, this is a nutrition, food, health type podcast. So, what foods are good for your ears? Turns out none. I said carrots. Just <laughs> yeah. stick two in each side and roll on. <laughs> yeah, and that's what and that's the thing. Dallas is thinking about vitamin A for your uh, eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not your ears. So he's close, but uninformed. But no, there's a very interesting thing, and you probably have heard your parents talk to you about this. There's the on, the only cells in the body that do not regenerate are hearing. Even nerve cells What's can that regenerate. About? We can't just put some stem cells in there? Have they tried? My only thought... Now, so that's a whole new thing. So you're opening up a whole new can of worms, but that's getting outside of... Trying to fish, baby. Well, that's getting outside of normal biology, right? If I'm injecting stem cells into your, your well, ears... There's a hole just squirted in there. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Your body's not going to do that. That's my whole thing, right? Well, yeah. Versus if you get cut, scar tissue, you can even regrow some muscle tissue and stuff. Obviously, later in life, it gets harder. But for whatever reason, the... They're, they don't seem to be any sort of thing that makes hearing or, more importantly, the, the cells of the ear regenerate. So that's what's weird is hearing is a very finite thing. Once it's gone, it's gone. And it, my guess is the, the complication of that ear canal. You know what I mean? Of that, of, of that ear process, exactly. Well, remember, the cochlea and the, the malleus are very, very solid. They're very, very rigid. They're almost more like bone. Now, we know bone can regrow and heal. But that's our bone that's making our red blood cells as well, right? That's our bone that is actively doing other things in the body. This is a stable organ. You know what I mean? Once it's formed, it's formed. Now, my, my other guess is that biologically, it's probably difficult to regenerate or regrow something that specific and niche, right? Yeah, not that bones aren't unique and special, but like... You have over 200, and they're all... Well, this is a three-part system exactly. of three unique bones all together. Exactly. So that's where it gets even weirder, right, versus a femur. Okay, well, that one's pretty straightforward. It just we'll needs to grow it back It together. just needs to grow back and stick to the other part. That's yeah. it. Yeah, versus when you get into that, you're getting into such an intricate... It's the right shape and Well, you're getting into such a and... delicate, super fragile thing so again think about this right you ever seen when bones re-mend and heal they can get all jagged they can get kind of rough around the edges same thing with scar tissue scar tissue isn't as flexible and bendable that might be the issue yeah go back millions and thousands of years they could have tried to and they could have just grown back in wrong then you have a big bulbous 
growth in your ear. Okay, well that's almost worse than not have than having a damaged one. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's it's a very interesting organ in that sense. So that's what's kind of interesting. There is no nutrition. There is no support. There's not like you can have heart nutrition and thyroid and eye and muscle and bone. No. There is nothing that regenerates healing. So that's the, or hearing, sorry. That's what's weird about it too. That's why I like listening to loud music not good because once you damage those receptors they're damaged they don't regenerate or change one of the ear problems i know about is as a kid you have to get tubes what are tubes in your ears for tubes are usually for ear infections what well, gets infected i don't it's to well a lot of times too and that's why kids usually get them people who have chronic ear infections usually it's going back to a, a heart issue not 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 necessarily like a, a deformity or anything but that heart isn't powerful enough especially when you're because think about when you get ear infections you're, you're a grown Kids, up when's, when's the last time you had one I've never heard of an adult getting one they, they will but very 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 rarely but I don't I don't know if I've ever had one if I did I was not conscious you don't remember yeah, yeah. I think I had my last one was probably around like 6 or 7 because I remember it, my whole head hurt to lay it on the pillow so it, it's true hell man there's a lot of nerve endings in there because yeah. it's so close to this jaw and brain so very painful, but no tubes are basically uh, you're circumventing the body. You're putting those tubes in there to to try to force that stuff to drain out, get remove some of that pressure and tension. Because that's why it starts to hurt so much. When you get an infection of any type, it inflames. So all of a sudden your ear closes up, starts squeezing on that super sensitive area. Gotcha. Now that's the other side too. The other thing that's what I was going to talk about. The other thing that the that the ear does, your balance. So you, you may not have thought about this. You're the uninformed consumer. But a lot of people realize, too, that your your orientation, what keeps you straight and narrow, is actually the ears. So besides having these hairs, there's actually a liquid that's inside these as well that your body uses to figure out where you're at in 3D space. So that's why a lot of people who have, like, vertigo and stuff, it's usually an issue with that inner ear. I knew balance came from the ears, but is that what it is? There's, mm -hmm. like, a... Is it a sack of liquid or so? There's actually a two. Gatorade bottle or something. So there's actually two. So this is good. So well, I say two. There's two different types. One's the uh, the liquid, and one does use actual just like air as as its as its thing. Weird. So the first one is the semi the semi circular canals. This is for dynamic equilibrium. So these are just these are specifically ones that let us know which direction our head moves. So. If you're going left, right, up, down, those are the ones. And that's why they're liquid. Because when you tilt back, think about it, Dallas, that liquid falls back. So it knows you're looking up. When you tilt down, it knows you're looking down. So just weird how we take all this data for granted, right? What? It, but again, that signal has to be coming from somewhere. So that's why I, that's why I like these podcasts. Yeah, It just kind of helps us see a little bit more about what's really going on. All I really knew about was the eardrum. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, hey, don't stick anything in your ears. Yeah. Yeah, should we put this Cheeto in here? <laughs> so, no. So, these semicircular canals are filled with fluid. So, each one of these, now there's actually three of these specifically throughout that whole ear uh, piece, basically, mm -hmm. inside there. So, those three, it's kind of an easy way to think about it. Think like GPS satellites. When you search for something or you try to position it, you always what? You need to triangulate it. Triangulate. So, no, you hit it perfect. That's why you have three. So, all it takes the data from those three points and can, that's why it can stay so accurate. That's why it knows, like, that's why you feel like you can't sit weirdly with your head for too long. You'll start to get kind of dizzy and strange. It's like, hey, this isn't good. We need you to move that head back. If they hold, if you stay upside down, like, say you hang from your feet for like 15 minutes, will all the blood rush your head and you'll die? Or is that just an old wise tale? The blood will rush your head, you won't die. Just pass out. You could pass out. Yes, you could. And but it's what, not going to kill you. Mm. Okay, I didn't think so. I well, just you hear that as a kid, you're like, oh. kill kill is a harder thing to do. But I mean, no, <laughs> you can. Um, people do those. Uh, you ever seen those little disc things? Those inversion tables. Yeah, like Q has. has one. Yeah, you can. They tell you to stay about twenty thirty minutes. I mean, at, start, but if you do six days, what it is <laughs> is a okay. lot. Remember, a lot of blood. Cause think about where your heart is. Right, so a lot of blood is actually just hanging out in the legs, in the or in the organs and stuff down here. So when you invert that, all of a sudden, what will make you pass out is all of the gravity is now pushing against your heart and pulling it back down. So instead of pulling low, so it's harder to pump. 
to your legs against gravity. Well, no, not even that. But also, remember, your heart's trying to pump, but it's also pushing back against that pump now because it's trying to physically fall. So instead of the pump, well, think about it. It's easy to pump it to the legs when you're standing upright. When you, when you flip upside down, now the heart's really having to try to push to keep it that way too. What it really is, though, is all of that blood leaving. It's leaving those easy ones. And more importantly, where's the pool about to form? Your head, yeah. where it's not supposed to. So that's where th- that's what a lot of that stuff is. Hmm. It's more just it's more just volume and gravity. You're not supposed to have that much blood volume on the upper side of your body. You're supposed it's because again, think about heart. It's like the top ten percent is really <laughs> all it's got to worry about. Versus ninety of it's below it. Where you switch that, ninety percent is above it, and only ten percent is down here. So that that's what that yeah. sensation is. Okay. So no, that's the first thing though, mainly with the uh, is it's got these little fluid sacs and the, basically they just help you figure out where you're at where you're going now the other side is static equilibrium so horizontally positioned inside this ear are these two things uh two different sensor chambers one's called the vestibule and this is the one specifically that is going to help make sure you detect your positioning in your head relative to gravity so that's what helps us realize if our head is tilted left tilted right so we have two systems one's hair and air one is that fluid liquid so those combined are what keep us basically horizontally positioned you think if you you drain that fluid sac you're probably screwed balance wise i mean it probably make you nauseous you know i mean you probably get sick you know if you couldn't figure out what your orientation was it, it and that's what a lot of these like honestly vertigo type problems are that's why they make you feel so bad because your body, your brain can't figure out where it is, basically, for lack of a yeah. better term. Not good. Not a, not a signal you want to deal with. And yeah, ask anybody that's dealt with vertigo. It's horrible. You'll just be walking, and then all of a sudden you'll just peel off to the left <laughs> and not really know why. That sucks. Well, you think that's straight. You know what I mean? You think you're walking straight. How do you deal with vertigo? How do you fix that? A lot of times you just got to sit down um, and let it pass. I thought like, it might be chronic. Well, it can be. It just depends on sometimes what's causing it. Now, it can be stuff in the brain sometimes that's off, but sometimes if it's that actual inner ear uh, organ, it it can be untreatable necessarily. There's some drugs and some stuff that can help with it, but that's a hard one. Vertigo is not easy. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, no, I just thought that was interesting because that's the one that helps us. Yeah, so these hair cells specifically – are there just to make sure that you're not when depending on what so yeah so here here's a better description of it. it says when the head moves and the the ostos auto autoliths are pulled in the direction of gravity or opposite of the direction of the movement the movement pulls the membrane which in turn bends the hair of the hair cells the hair cells transmit the information about the position to the sensory neuron and then the sensory neuron send the signals to the cranial nerve in the vestibular branch of the cerebellum. So that's what's interesting. Half of these are sending them to your auditory processing. Half are sending them to your brain stem. So it's weird. All of that data is being sent out completely different ways. Now, again, mm-hmm. one is the vibration. Like like this is saying, those same hair cells figure out gravity too. So they're actually doing two jobs. So it's kind of weird that those don't regenerate, right? You would think that the body would find that super valuable. I, I don't know why other than – because that's the thing – Inside these skeletal systems are these little hairs, for lack of a better term for them. That's what they call them, or hair cells. Mm-hmm. Now, so another big, like, uh, I guess, disease or issue is tinnitus. What would that be classified as? So tinnitus is just ringing in the I guess head. it's not a disease, but how how do you get it? Oh, no. Just loud noises? Or oh, is no, it, it is. I got oh, it, it right is here. a disease? Mm-hmm. It technically, it's a, it's you know what I mean because it's got a specific set of symptoms. Okay. So tinnitus, the de- this is actually the hard definition. This type. is the word I would not want to get this one. This, this one's one hell. sounds like the worst. You, strangely, you know, one of the few things that helps with it, float tanks. Really? For whatever reason, being in that sensory deprivation environment, it will actually quiet the tinnitus. Because what it is is it's an overstimulation. It's almost like it's still sending that signal, even though there's no signal to be sent. Tinnitus is an awareness of sound in the ears or head, which is not from an, an, an actual external source. 
There are many different types of tinnitus sounds. Common descriptions are a hiss, a whistle, a whir, a ring, or a buzz. Occasionally, it can be segment. It can be segments of music. <laughs> the pitch can be high or low, and the level can vary over time. So yeah, that's really all it is. And now, what types is it? That's where it gets interesting because there's actually two types. The two types. One is subjective. This is this can be heard only by the person. It is by far the most common type of tinnitus. So they basically thought people were crazy for a long time. Yeah, I'm just hearing this whistling in my ears, Doc. You're possessed, man. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna we're gonna burn you at the stake next week. <laughs> it's like yeah, we're a couple years later. Yeah, that guy just had tinnitus. Yeah, we're gonna take all your toenails off. I'm sorry, that's the only treatment. Doctor tonight figured it, figured it out. Then there's objective. So this is this this can be heard by somebody examining the person, and is very uncommon. It can be caused by a variety of physical effects such as spasms of the tiny muscles in the ears, abnormalities in blood vessels, or increased blood flow, flow to the ear. So wait, the first few, those people have no proof other than almost, they... Yeah, almost most people, most common. It's just, I hear a noise even though there's no noise in here. Oh, Lord. So here's some of the causes, or what they say causes it. One is just normal hearing loss. As hearing loss occurs with some different degrees, uh... It, 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 it basically it's just saying as those hair cells start to get old and break down now this is the more common one and this is the one i'm more familiar with because this is what like rock rock stars and music people will get which is exposure to loud noises so noise is one of the most common causes of hearing loss duh a single incident experienced at close range may permanently damage your hearing that's why it, look if you're the a-hole who gets uh foghorns and are, what are those things? Aren't they foghorns? Uh, oh yeah, riding people's ears, air how, horns. How, horn how dare you? How dare you? First off, it's a good prank. It, it gotcha. It, it's permanently awful. scarred but for that, life. But that's what's weird is, like you said, is it's not listening to something loud. It's one incident of something extremely loud, right? So it's not like, like Krakatoa in your ear. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And again, if you keep it under a hundred decibels, you're usually okay. But a lot of times, if you get something over a hundred and twenty. And it's right there. The ears can't recover. You you basically broke something. Is it, it. Is an easy way yeah. to think about it. Exactly. Um, so yeah, repeated exposure to loud noises over an extended period of time uh, can present serious risks as well. Another form is injury to the ear or the head. Ear infections can actually cause hearing loss and tinnitus as well. Because again, it's basically any time you get inflammation or damage to that area. That's what's causing these types of things. So, look at what the why are people born deaf? What what's the main reason? So again, it's, what's I, the I'm, main issue? They're missing their eardrum, missing their their hair. One of those pieces is off, and that's that's what. I didn't know if there was like a common piece that most deaf people don't have, but what's real amazing is we figured out how to help deaf people hear not again depends on what piece you're missing but mm -hmm. they do have hearing aids which again i don't know exactly how they work if they're sending signals to the brain for you or well some of them are that like quiet place some of them are, you've seen the ones where people have the little thing on the side mm -hmm. of their actual head versus some people just have an amplifier yeah so there's two again it's, it's is that signal actually making it to the the cortex at all or is the receiver damaged? Because again, a lot of times your brain's not messed up, but there's no vibrations, no no sig, no nerve signals being, being sent, sent at yeah. all. But mostly because a lot of times if there's damage, it's just not picking up on it. It's not stimulating that hair cell like it's supposed to. Now, generally when people are born deaf, it's going to be something like that. There's a there's something wrong with their actual physical mechanism with with the mechanics of it so the eardrum isn't vibrating right they may have something some sort of damage to the actual hairs anything of that sort is going to be what causes you to be deaf from from birth per se just a shame nutrition can't help them man yeah no it's just interesting that right vitamins minerals essential fatty acids build up everything but it's like once you build that system it's done it's in utero it's a one and done and, yeah. and but it's again it's in the womb only after that, we don't. Body says we don't even address that. We just let it work until it stops. Maybe stem cells. I don't know. I feel like that might be our last hope. Which is interesting too. Again, your body—it's almost like your body values sight more, right? Not values, but it it, ke it keeps regenerating your eyes. <laughs> Not to rank disabled people, but 
I think losing vision would be worse than losing hearing. There's people that would rather be dead than blind. They've done polls. People would rather just be dead than lose their vision. No comment, but yeah. <laughs> I could I could roll with well, one eye. But we can't drive. Can't watch any form of entertainment, movies, TVs, video games. Can't, I mean, you can get around. I've seen people, but they listen to a lot of music. <laughs> you really, yeah, you really start Read to a lot, appreciate Read a lot of, lot of books on tape. <laughs> Podcast. And see, that's the other evil one. Let's just switch being deaf. Almost to live in a complete silence your entire life. Like, imagine being in a, basically a monastery where everyone's was, taking a vow of silence. I was just about to say, I'd have to become a monk of sorts. No, or no, just learn sign language, but... Well, in sign language is, is interesting, but imagine only being able to get someone's attention if they're looking at you. I can't say, hey, Dallas, you're not going to turn around. <laughs> That's true. Just, just weird. Like, is it a fire? You run around screaming. It adds danger to your life because, like, hey, what? Duck! You can't duck, but Don't not flinch. nearly as bad as being blind. I mean, it's almost immobile at a point. Yeah. You can move around, but, like, come on. It's you know, dangerous a lot, a lot every step of, you take. They have seen eye dogs. But, again, more importantly, a lot of people manage. They live on their own. They learn how to cook. They learn how to brush saw, their there teeth. There was a blind guy um, the two years I was at State, just always walking. And, honestly, it's very simple how he figured out how to get around. I'm sure he took a tour of the campus. But once he took the tour, he learned, okay, I know how, how the tiles on this oh, edge shit. of the sidewalk feel on the way to my class. So back up. If I'm off of these tiles, I know I'm in the wrong spot. Well, this is amazing. So though. it just takes way more work. To, no, I, it's not even work. Because think well, about... To, I mean, I guess I did take a tour of the campus, but he had to physically remember... The, no, no, no. Dallas, that's easy when you can't see. I'm not saying I, it's easy, guess, but think but about how much data if he you've been doesn't blind, have If you've been blind a while, yes. But if this, if you're new to Recently it, blinded, yes. yeah. Well, no, that's, and that's all I was going to say. It's like... Think about how much data his brain isn't... Pro- We've been in a float tank. That's true. Once you close all that off, it's amazing how much your brain opens up. So for him, you say, it, I can't imagine how he remembers this. He's like, how else would I not... This is just how I've seen my whole life. This is seeing for me. It's remembering these different parts of it. So my brain just quickly snaps that information up. Hey, when you switch from tiles to the, to si- sidewalk, you're about... A hundred feet from your dorm. Exactly. Once you get to, and he had a big old stick he swing around to. So no dog for him. I think those I've, are even more impressive than people I that just use like the dogs sometimes. Just, That's the just thing. Use sometimes he would have a dog. Sometimes he wouldn't. Interesting. So I don't know if it was didn't feel like taking it. Who well, knows? I had a teacher at at Heinz, my my Old Testament teacher. He was blind. I mean, the guy was super freaking smart. You know what I mean? Born blind, or I believe so. He he had been. I think he'd been blind for a while, if not. He was in his 40s or 50s. are people who you have sight, you have hearing, and you lose it. Because then you know what you've lost. If you're born without it, it's like, okay. The problem is you got to retrain your brain at, at whatever age. Exactly. Like I said, if you come into the world and this is how your brain works, that's what they always say, right? Like the guy who was echolocating that was blind. Remember that? Yeah, like a bat. We would go, how would you do that? His brain goes, I don't have anything else to do. I'm just here to process data. This is the only data this guy's getting. Everybody in. would be clicking. It's so auditory. Have eyes, yeah, it's yeah. all auditory. So that's what. So all of a sudden, yeah, I, my brain got good at figuring out what a brick wall and a and a um, a wood wall sound like. Yeah. Or what? A, that's what he could tell what a bush was. That was what was so weird. He could be like, "This is not." He's like, "There's some sort of barrier here," but he said it's not man-made. And he was just, they're like, "That's a that's a tree." <laughs> he's like, "Wow, crazy that he could just tell." Simply by, based on what he's hearing back. But again, this thing is powerful. Tell me what, give me data. Whether that data is pure sight, whether it's pure smell, that's what we'll get good at. Hmm. See, so humans are crazy, man. That's what this podcast is really about. We got, we got big brains. That's all we, hey, look, we put all of our resource in the big brain basket. That's why the dumber we're getting, it's really starting to, we're losing the only thing we're good at. <laughs> Because we don't have claws, we don't or have we, we don't off, have tough skin. We're offloading our intelligence to technology because it's easier that way. Right. You don't have to think as hard. It's a path of least resistance. Yeah. The problem is electricity why, why goes away. Anything when you can Google everything. Why would I store any information up here when I can? Oh yeah, let me just King Arthur, eighteen seventy six. You don't remember that? Well, it becomes of not. becomes false. It becomes pseudo knowledge. I said 1876. You know like I mean? King Arthur was. Well, it becomes pseudo knowledge because you think you know a bunch of stuff, and as soon as the lights go out, you don't know anything. More importantly, you don't even really understand how the grid works to get back all the stuff you stored. 
that's where it gets really scary. You know, is our technology is getting so advanced and so overly complicated, and you need because that's the thing. It used to be like, okay, Dallas and Jordan want to survive. Uh, we can make a fire. That's not super complicated. It's hard, but it's not super complicated. And we need a roof, and we need a weapon. That's it. Sharp, pointy stick, roof, and fire. We're in. We can survive as long I've as I've seen it to. done on Survivor, where they make a fire with just wood. It's a lost skill. Easy, easy in um, the technicals. You know, you're rubbing two sticks yeah. together. Very hard in execution. It takes I'm saying a lot though, of energy. Could can, wear you out. I'm saying for Dallas and Jordan. Can we build a cold fire power plant? No, you see what I'm saying? Nah. Is our problems have gotten so big that you need institutions, you need firms, you need power companies need teamwork. and government to bring not just people, teams of highly trained and different specialty people. That will build you one power plant. So that's all I'm saying is we we've overcomplicated things so much that now the single individual is almost helpless. So that's what's kind of the real scary part about our society is that the basic person doesn't understand how to rebuild or recreate anything. It's just already there. We're just resting on our laurels. More importantly, more smart people are, are, are adding more to the complication. You know, we're splitting atoms now. It's like, okay, well, I, I don't even know where to start. I mean, at this point, we just got to trust the system we build because we really don't have an alternative to educate the masses mm -hmm. and a lot of the basics. It's, we're past that. The problem we're facing is progress. Because progress used to be this slow, steady thing that was nice and easy. But the thing is, progress is jumping so dramatically that the average person is just lost, right? I mean, we went from no cell phones to basically supercomputers in our hands. So, like, wait, well, what's next, right? Oh, well, we're just going to put it in your brain. You're going to put it in my brain? Well, okay. <laughs> All right, I, want, I, want, I, guess. I want robot ears. I want to be able to hear everything. Well, that's the problem. Now, you know, when people are talking shit about you. You don't need that. What a superpower. You can hear so well. You can hear thoughts. Well, that's On the other side of the planet. Not even a superpower. You can selectively choose. Yeah, it's not even a superpower. That's the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. Neuralink, kind of. You see how weird it's getting? And that's, and that's where it goes back to. Can Jordan and Dallas make Neuralink? No. But Jordan and Dallas can make a spear, fire, and we can find a cave. Do you want Neuralink to happen? Because right now it's still in the sci-fi <sighs> stages. I mean, they have some For the people who are stuff, disabled... But. And, and and truly are trapped in their bodies, yes. So you see what I'm saying? Like, for, for certain people, yeah. Like, I really would love for them to be able to, to openly communicate, right? If you're quadriplegic and you can't really talk other than, like, blowing yeah. into a tube or something. Path to hell is so, paved so, with good intentions. So, yeah, that's what's weird. Yeah, I, I would love for that. Or, like you said, imagine we could build a robotic ear now. That's amazing. Or or more importantly, skip skip all that. Just build the the machine that now processes it better than your ear. You know what I mean? Drill a hole Turns in your out ear, you can't even hear frequencies in. that you like you were saying. You can't even hear. Forget hearing. You're, <laughs> you're, you're hear a dog better. all of a sudden. Yeah, exactly. No, you can hear things that didn't even like that were beyond our capability. I can hear color. Smell. <laughs> Help. Smells too, right? That would be to me. You want you want the real lie detector test? Be able to smell, smell adrenaline. That's what that's what people say. Like, oh yeah, you know, dogs can smell fear. They can't smell fear, idiot. They can smell adrenaline. Because when you get nervous, you start perspiring more. Yeah. You also start emitting pheromones. So there's your lie detector test. That's true. It's we need, smell. We need to upgrade our nose. Well, there you go, because that's what they're trying to detect with a, um, whatever the polygraph machine is, is your heart rate changing. But more importantly, what if I could tell that you're actually nervous because you're emitting chemicals that only come out of your body? You're making a lot of cortisol right now. So are you stressed? Why are you stressed? I'm just asking you where you were on that night. So you see what I'm saying? That's where that's where it gets really freaky, kind of, because now you, there's no you can't even beat that test because it's a biological. But if that response. guy's lying about where he was that night, we would want to know. Exactly. But and with the amount of nonsense out there, without the, with the amount of just noise and garbage, we got it. That that's what I heard Joe talking about the other day. This podcast has gotten a little off the rails. We've drifted from ears, but we, we at this do. point we covered ears and and we're gonna come back. Yeah. Um, we just need to test to know if people are telling the truth. Because people just get on there and they just get on Twitter and tweet something. Like, is there any validity to that? Like, are you just talking nonsense or? Because again, that's the thing. It could. That's what you really need as what your fact your checker. What are your intentions? This per Facebook just says underneath, this is a lie. <laughs> this person is lying. Or this is we not even a person. Them. This is literally an algorithm. This yeah. is a bot. 
This is a machine. You're, you're talking to a machine. You're angry at what this machine robot typed up. Hello? Grow up. Get off the internet. You're, you're arguing with someone who's not even real. Yeah, like I and said. And that happens every day. People don't realize they're talking to a lot of bots throughout their day. Especially if you use social media a lot, half the people you're talking to aren't real. Yeah, John C. And they'll respond with a, it sounds real. It's just, it's words typed on a screen. Anything can sound real when the sentence is typed down. No, more importantly, we know they're training algorithms to sound more like people. Yeah. They, they've, they're, if you just Google that, they'll tell you this is what they're trying to do. So why do you think they're not trying to do that to you? <laughs> exactly. No, John C.'s been my friend since I first got Facebook. He was an early bot. I hate, <laughs> I hate to break that to you. I don't know if that's happened all the time, but just random people you meet on the internet, don't get upset. Don't get angry. They're probably not real. Just remember that. At the end, before you even respond. If they are, it doesn't matter. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> that's the other side of it. Treat them all like they're bots. So I want to talk about one last thing about ears so we can wrap this up. I want to Let talk, me hear it. I want to talk about uh, ear candles. <laughs> oh, yeah, we mentioned that earlier. So, yeah, it's called uh, – some people call it candling. It, it, but basically it, what it is is you take a hollow candle and you stick it on your ear and you light it. And what it's supposed to do is create pressure. But it's kind of – Hold up. There's no way this isn't good for you. This has to – <laughs> This is an ancient remedy, Jordan. Yeah, it's not that it's even not good for you. It's more just like it, it, all the re, all the data on it. It's like iffy at best. All the benefits are sketch. Yeah, it just does. It doesn't really help you like it does. Like yeah, some earwax came out, man. Don't know if that was a good thing or bad. Or if it wouldn't have come out through using any other procedure. Or just natural. Because the big thing with candling is you can do that type of stuff at your home. But the problem too is more than anything is you. Be be careful with your ears. Don't be sticking stuff in them, around them, into them, like because they're very sensitive and they do not respond well to damage. I think we need to touch on why we even have earwax, because I'm not sure I understand. I mean, I, I, mean, I know being dry like a, is not great, but does that help you hear better? Does that what does that do for well, you? As far as a technical thing, I think it is used to clean the ear. I'm, now I can read. Yeah, I can do Google, a little Google, I can Google for that this real quick. Because I saw some TikToks, bro. While you're googling. Please. They would pull out. I've I've seen bugs pulled out. That's sketchy and scary. But beyond a bug, I saw, they pull out chunks of earwax that are literally like the size of your finger, half the size of a normal thumb. Ugh. And you're just like, how did that build up? Why did that build up? How, how did earwax get stuck? But it's very satisfying to see it get pulled out, but also gross at the same time. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Basically, it's just uh, it's produced by the body to help clean, protect, and lubricate your ear. That's okay. what that's what I was gonna say because it, it's fatty. It's kind of a fatty substance, so dirt, stuff like that gets in there. The earwax is to make sure it gets it, and that's why it slowly moves out. So it people, bring, it can you really make with it. candles out of earwax? No, 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 no. Or can't do they? I mean, just you I see, you those see aren't the, the ear candles I was talking. No, about. No, no, you see sure it on cartoons it. where. Uh, yeah, I think excessive. it's more just like a funny because it is a fatty substance. I don't know if it burns the same as. I just don't wax, know if you could collect collect enough. I mean, you could collect a good bit. Whole village, right? Maybe that'd be your only. Ten channel. years later, you have one candle ear wax. Just not feasible. Yes, yeah, so, so ear wax is about twenty to fifty percent fat. Coats the ear, moisturizes it, fights off infection. Just comes out. Keeps of the, dust and debris from getting deep inside the ear. Just comes out of the, the walls of the inner ear, I guess, like secretes. Exactly. So if you can, I'm showing Dallas this, but you see how long that canal is before the drum. Yeah. That's what it is. So basically, it's coming out of that. It's basically like sweat. Easiest way to think about it. It's gotcha. produced, and then as, oh my God, think about if you lived in the desert. The amount of dust that would just be getting deep in there. What, what it does is that's why earwax eventually builds up into those things and comes out. So if you live in a humid region, you might have less earwax than, say, you lived in a desert. Because mm. it's more dry, you might need more lubrication. Maybe. Compared to here, it's I would say almost, wet. I would say almost definitely. Cause especially dry, dry more so than anything, but the dust on top of the dryness. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you're in a forest, you're not going to really be get, getting – there's still mud, there's still dirt – but you're not going to be in that where it's in the air, and that's the biggest problem. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense. But uh, See, I'm glad you asked that because I, th I thought that's what it was. I wasn't positive. I don't know everything, y'all. I'm, I'm learning with y'all. But I guess my really my last question is, I guess it's something I could Google. What you got? I want to see where in the world are ear infections most common. 
Hmm, we mean like what population? Like not yeah, babies. You know, it might be like France. France is just having big ear infections or something, but I'm not seeing anything. I just ear wonder where it is might very be. Very uncommon. Common. Very uncommon. Uh, re- relative to like upper respiratory. Otitis media <laughs> is an ear infection. Okay. I thought you were saying, I thought it was a country. <laughs> yeah, I got some otitis media. Are you good? Did you bump so your head you, in Latin? So did you see anything? Uh, no, I don't see anything about it. About where? But okay. Well, I guess the world may never know. Yeah, no, again, it's generally babies. Why are children more likely? Several reasons. The immune system. If you Google that, by the way, ear infection, it just gives me a bunch of coronavirus data from around the world. (laughs) Great. So, to end this, I would like to make a recommendation to anyone trying to learn. Go on YouTube, and it's called Kazergazat. It's a German word. means in a nutshell. can't spell it for you, but... Just you'll Google it like K U R. Yeah, Google. Throw a Z. Throw a Z <laughs> in there. Search in a nutshell. Yeah, because there goes that. In a That's nutshell. the term. They for have it. a lot of good series, and it's kind of it's an animated series on YouTube to help you learn about a lot of this. And they just released one on the immune system that was. Have you seen it? They're doing a three part series. The first one was. I saw it. I haven't Chef's watched Kiss. it yet though. It was very informative. T cells are amazing. We got B cells in there working. It's really. I mean, honestly, way better than you could even describe on a podcast. So if you're interested in science and, they, and your immune system, and there's, their videos are about ten minutes. Yeah, they're n- they're not really hard hard watches. But all right, thanks for listening. If you're still with us, we got a little tangent in there, but you know, it's always good to throw in some personal values and, and some current data. What's happening in the world? Yeah. So, all right, thanks for listening with your eardrums and your cochlea. Keep them safe. <laughs>